the rule for continuity today? The definition of continuity is something we talked about almost every single year on the multiple choice, and here's my favorite part, calculator part of the AP test yes. is a multiple choice continuity question. So there are only 15 multiple choice calculator questions and they always put one on there that's a definition about continuity. Multiple choice calculator questions. That's why I cannot stress to you enough the need to not use your calculator. There are 30 non-calculator multiple choice questions and 15 calculators. <laughs> Here's the If you take it CHS, if that ends up being it, it's zero calculator the entire day. Yeah, okay. No. No. A function no. is continuous at a number a if the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. In order for a function to be continuous, you must prove the following three pieces. One, that a is in the domain of f, meaning f of a is equal to a number. Two, the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, meaning left hand limit equals right hand limit. Three, the limit equals f of a. These three things must be proven to prove continuity at a point. So if you got a question that says, is this function continuous at the point x equals 5, you have to go through 1, 2, and 3. Now on your paper, I think the opposite is going to A function can be said to be a left-hand continuous or right-hand continuous. So not only can a function be continuous over the entire thing, it can be left or right-hand continuous because the limit as x approaches a from the left is equal to f of a. But maybe it, from the right it was not. So wouldn't every function have either one of those two? No. No? So, if I asked you to look at f of 0, does f of 0 exist? No. So the function can't be continuous from the left or from the right, because it fails part 1, which is that f of 0 exists. If I colored in the top dot, now, the function is right-hand continuous because the limit from the right equals the f of a value. Mm -hmm. So that's what this says. The function itself is not continuous, but it's right-hand continuous. Functions can be continuous on an interval. So let's say, for example, Sure. We have tangent. We know tangent has several points of discontinuity, all of its vertical asymptotes. If they said, all right, whoop, let's shrink it, and we want to only look at the interval from, we got to shrink it down even real far, maybe pi fourths to pi halves. Now it might be continuous because you're not hitting a vertical asymptote because you shrunk the domain. Here are examples of discontinuity. So we have several types of discontinuity and I've hinted at them over the past couple weeks. Removable discontinuity is where you have what looks like a vertical asymptote so you have that division of x minus 2. But what happens is if you factor the numerator, the x minus 2's cancel. 
so you end up with a line, but that line will have a hole at 2. That was the example we did the other day of like the x squared minus 9 over the x minus 3, where you had a hole at 3, even though the graph didn't appear that way. An example of infinite discontinuity is where you have a vertical asymptote. So that's where you have a vertical asymptote and a function is going to an infinity. Jump discontinuity is where your graph has this kind of occurrence or this occurrence. The This is called, does anybody remember what this function here is called? Mm -hmm. The greatest integer function. Okay. So this is the greatest integer function. It's also, we could call it a step function. That's an excellent example of jump discontinuity because the domain of this function is all real. Every x value has a y value. However, you have a jump at all integer range values. So none of these are continuous by an interval? Uh, they could be continuous on an interval. None of them are continuous uh, over their entire domain. Okay. So you could make any one of them continuous on an interval. I could say 1 to negative 1. And it would be continuous. Uh, that one for the, uh, for the second one. Is that right hand or left hand continuous at all? Or is that right? No, because never will they. Because one part is zero. So here, when x is zero, it's one. The limit from the right would be infinity. The limit from the left would be infinity. The f of a value is one. Does infinity ever equal one? Therefore, never right or left hand continuous. These would all be right hand continuous. Because the limit from the right would equal the value at that point. So given the following graph of f of x, at which values is it discontinuous? And which type of discontinuity is occurring? So when you look at the graph, remember anything that you have to lift your finger up is discontinuity. So right here at 1, it is removable. Travel down from 3, we have jump. And that's one of the one I always hate x equals five. Because like to me, yeah, they call it jump, but like it should be a removable point in my opinion. Because it's a removable point. So if you were at removable point, I would take that too. But yes, you could also refer to it as jump. It's the one that I did play it yesterday. Oops. I didn't mean to. I was like standing here like this and I just like launched. <laughs> okay. We already hinted at this function a little bit earlier. We talked about the step function. It was on that graph for you. The step function is an excellent example of jump. However, it's also an example of having lots of points of discontinuity. So if you had this as a question, it says find the points of discontinuity. Well, the easiest thing to do would be to put into words that there will be a point of discontinuity at all integer values of x. Because all of these jumps are going to occur at the integer. So what you could say is the greatest integer function will have jump discontinuity at every integer. So don't try to list them all. Just put it into words. Can you say like at f of k? Yeah. The function has right hand continuity. So if you want to go a little bit further and you want to give it some continuity, you can say, okay, the function has right-hand continuity, 
because the limit as x approaches any integer value from the right of f of x will equal that greatest integer. And that's kind of like what we're proving over here. If you look at x approaches 2 from the left, you get 1. If you look at x approaches 2 from the right, you get 2. If you look at f of 2, you get 2. So it's a right hand continuum. So that's example 2. So the third example is should the function f of x equals 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared is continuous on the closed interval negative 1 to 1. So this is the case where you could talk about just looking at a screenshot of a function and determining if it's continuous on that screenshot. So here's what we know about negative 1 to 1. If you think about this function right here, its domain is truly negative 1 to 1, right? Because it's under the square root. 1 minus x squared couldn't be bigger than 1, or you'd get a negative under the square root, which is the x. So this little interval is actually the entire domain of the function. Let's try to graph this by hand. What do you know about 1 minus a square root? What's that going to do to the square root? Okay, so it's going to shift it. It's actually going to shift it up 1 and reflect it because the negative is on the square root. So it means instead of being this way, it's this way. And then instead of being down here, it comes up 1. So if you didn't know what this looked like but you, you had to graph it, what could I do? to easily get myself an idea of the graph. Exactly. Plug in some points, right? Plug in negative one, for sure, because that's an end point. So if you plug negative one in, what do you know about negative one squared? One minus one is? Square root of zero is? One minus zero is? So at x is negative one, we are at y is positive one. Let's talk about the fact that negative 1 squared is going to be the same as 1 squared. So at 1, we're also going to be at 1. Yeah. Well, 0. 0 is an easy point to find. What's 1 minus 0? 1 minus 0 is 0. Oh, uh, we'll divide. Yeah. 1 minus 0 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Do we need to find points in between, or can you kind of figure out the shape of this? It's a circle. Yes. Circle. See if we have a little circle. Radius one. <laughs> so, would you say that that function is going to be continuous on that closed interval? Yeah. Most certainly. You can graph it. We know that there's no number because we already confirmed the domain. So what you would do basically is you could kind of do everything we said. We talked about that it's reflected and up one. Show f of negative one is one. Show f of zero is zero. Show f of one is one. 
and then talk about its domain. So how do you find this domain, algebraically? What do you know about underneath the square root? This is that quadratic idea, where it's either in or out. So if you factor this, it's a difference of squares. So your key points are 1 and negative 1. And we know that these are in. So your domain is the interval. If it's continuous on its domain, it's continuous on the interval. We could show that all the limits are true for all those points. Now, is this function continuous at 1 or negative 1? Is this function continuous at one or negative one? At one, it's not continuous, and not even fully continuous. Right, it's not fully continuous. Because even though f of a is equal to one, the limit from the left wouldn't equal the limit from the right because there is no limit from the left. So these are, this would be right hand. Continuous. And this would be left hand. Well, I'll take out two sides. Let's graph this. Let's start with x plus 1 for x less than or equal to 1. What do I know about that starting point on my graph? Well, if I make it at 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So you have the point 1, 2, closed circle. Y-intercept is 1. Slope is 1. So the first part of my graph is continuing forever to negative infinity stopping at the point 1, 2 with a closed circle. How about 1 over x? So 1 over 1 would be 1. Open circle here because it's not inclusive. 1 over 2 would be a half. 1 over 3 would be a third. Open circle again because it doesn't include 3. Square root function starts at 3. Close circle. 3 minus 3 gives you 0. So we've got a closed circle here at 3, 0. Plug in 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. I'm going to jump a little bit ahead, because if I plug in 4, we get 1, so that's nice. If I plug in 5, I get 2, that's not so nice. 6, I get 3, that's not so nice. However, if I plug in 7, I get 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So if I had to plot another point, I'm going to the point 7, 2. So there's my nice little piecewise function. So now it says find the numbers at which f is discontinuous. At which of these numbers is it continuous from the left, the right, or neither? So where's one of my first points of discontinuity? One, two. Good. So right here at one, right? At x equals one, we have what type of discontinuity? And is it continuous from the left, right, or neither? Yeah. Yeah. Where's my next point of discontinuity? Okay. What type of discontinuity? And is it continuous from the left, right, or neither? 
Any other points of discontinuity? Uh, if you think about the domain or range of this function here, it's going to continue us forever, right? If you think about the domain and range of this, it's going to continue us down forever. Okay. One more example. <clears throat> Does the following function have removable discontinuity at some point x equals i? If the discontinuity is removable, Create a function that would make it not have removable discontinuity. So, what's your first thought when you see this function? Just in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Negative two. Okay, but if you put in x equals negative 2. But it's asking us to add a rule that's going to be removed. This can't be moved, it has to just give it. So add a 2, it doesn't. It does. A 2, positive 2. Is it almost there? Uh, I have A on mine. Does yours say 2 or A? It says 2. So it should say negative. So it says A. That's why I was like, Sorry, there's just a tiny little negative. Okay. So yes, it would have a new at negative two. Sorry. Why? What happens at two? What? Yeah, because what's probably going to happen to the numerator of this function? What? It's going to cancel, right? So your first thought when you see this is maybe I should factor that numerator. So what would that turn into? That's minus two and that's plus two. So what's that leave you with? So if you think about the graph of x minus 4, like that. How do I make f of x continuous if I write this as a new function? I want to find a function g of x so that together we'll call it h of x is continuous. So f of x is what was given. I want to make a function g of x that will make this continuous. So how could I write a piecewise function that would make that true? You could say that f of x is that original equation at all points except x equals negative 2. Okay, awesome. So g of x would look where then? At 2. Or negative 2, but yeah. Or negative 2. What would g of x need to be? Negative 2. Negative 6. Yeah, easier than that. I, g of x just needs to be the number negative 6, right? All we got to do is fill in that hole. So we could say g of x is negative 6. By constructing this piecewise, I've now made a continuous function. So this fills in my hole. Got it? Does that make sense? This looks a lot easier. Continuity is? Because you have to know how to do a limit. So just some key points. If f and t are continuous at a and c, and c is a constant, then the following are true. Any polynomial is continuous everywhere that it is continuous on all reals. 
Any rational function is continuous wherever it is defined, i.e. continuous on its domain. Rational function is something like 1 over x. So it's continuous on its domain. Because if you think about it, the domain of 1 over x is all reals except x does not equal 0. That's actually considered a continuous function. Please wrap your mind around that. For one second, so I said don't. It's continuous. 1 over x is considered to be continuous on its domain. Because the domain does not include 0. Something to think about. The following are always continuous on their domain. So following functions always continuous on their domain are all polynomials, all squares, all cubes, all <coughs> vortex, quintix, etc. Homework. Look, I'm getting better. I'm trying to teach my history. <coughs> we will finish 2-3 tomorrow. <coughs> Review on Monday.